Hello. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about the types of the venous of the venopathies or the venous disorders. So, under the types of the venopathy, we have primary venous disorders. Basically, now in primary venous disorder, it is going to be generally the pathogenesis under the primary venous disorder is that you are going to have abnormality in the valves of the veins is it clear normally in the veins you need to know that there is no there is no pressure inside the vein the pressure inside the vein is zero because the pressure has been overcome all through in the at uh, the capillaries in order to cause the net filtration pressure so all the pressure has been overcome into the capillaries the pressure from the heart has been overcome there so now you need to know that what normally there are mechanisms that is we're supposed to help their mechanism that is supposed to help in order to do a venous return from the blood from the from the veins into the heart and what are those mechanisms the first major mechanism is the valves is it clear? so the valves are going to prevent the backflow of blood from the from the valves can prevent the backflow of blood from the um, from the from the upper part of the vein towards its lower part is it clear so valves are one of the major mechanisms to prevent the backflow of blood from the veins into from the heart into the veins is it clear the second mechanism that prevents the backflow of blood or that promote the front flow of blood is going to be the muscle pump mechanism is it clear? the muscle pump mechanism now the muscle pump mechanism is which mechanism this mechanism when you move or you have the most muscular contractions like in the cases where you are moving you are going to have um, the pumping of the blood from the veins into the heart in order to promote the venous return so this muscle pump mechanism is also a very important action in order to promote venous return the third element is the venous tone is it clear you need to know that what the veins are capable of contracting so veins are capable of contracting particularly caused by the sympathetic nervous system we have um, local causes that causes the vein to contract and we have also the systemic causes like the sympathetic nervous system System, that causes the vein to contract is it clear systemic like the sympathetic nervous system that causes the vein to contract now when the vein contract that increase the tone and that can increase the pressure inside the 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 the, the, the um, vessels and the pressure down of the freeze now is going to favor a venous return is it clear so those are the three major mechanisms that help in order to um, in order to promote um, the the in order to prevent to move the flow of blood is it clear now you need to know that what in primary venous disorder we have any pathology that is involved with valves is it clear generally pathology that are involved with valves valves are the are the uh, inherent property of the vein that's why it's called primary venous disorder it is a property that the vein has is it clear in order for it to promote the back fruit to, to promote the venous return it is a property that the vein have the other ones the muscle pump mechanism and the venous stone is not actually coming from the vein muscle pump mechanism has a lot of the muscles that you have the back fluid you have the back flow of blood into the heart the venous return and the venous stone sympathetic nervous system is as a result still of the sympathetic nervous system and not the vein is it clear so all these ones now are going to be involved now in a secondary venous um, disorder so when you are going to have when you affect these two you are involved now in a secondary venous disorder so the primary venous disorder is the one that involves the valves so now you need to know that well, what are the risk factors for you to have a primary venous disorder for you to have a valvular disorder is it clear so the risk factors for valvular disorder the first one is congenital is it clear? Congenital. You need to know that people, if people can grow with a valvular defect of the blood vessels of the veins, is it clear? So it can be congenital. That's the first risk factor. The second risk factor is that it's a female sex. Females are more prone to have a valvular defect than males. Is it clear? So they have more of the valvular veins, valvular venous defect than the males.
The third element of valvular venous defects is a chronic um, um, drug abuse, intravenous drug abuse. Is it clear? So when some people use chronically intravenous drug abuse, particularly at the level of the thigh, those drugs, uh, but particularly at the level of the lower limb, those drugs are capable of destroying the valves. Is it clear? So when you have chronic misuse of drugs like cocaine, so they are injecting themselves products. Is it clear? They can, it can result to the sclerosis of the valve and the incompetence of those valves in the veins. Exactly. So those are the risk factors associated with venous disorder, with primary venous disorders. And the mechanism under which you have primary venous disorder is a valvular incompetence. Now, the next point that you have to visualize now is the secondary venous disorder, secondary venous disorder or secondary venous insufficiency. Now, in secondary venous disorder, you need to point out the fact that what when you're in secondary venous disorder, it is mostly because of those two other mechanisms, the muscle pump mechanism, and we have also the, um, the, the systemic mechanism, which can result to a valvular defect. And I'm going to speak about the systemic mechanism all summarized inside the v course triad. Is it clear? So for you to know secondary venous disorders, what I can call secondary venous disorder is mostly summarized under the vehicle triad. Now, the vehicle triad is made up of three things. The first element in the vehicle triad is going to be um, a blood venous blood stasis. Is it clear? So it is good to precise that it is venous blood that is stasis. So the venous blood stasis is what is going to. So you have venous blood stasis, the first element that can result to a secondary venous disorder or a coagulation in or thrombosis at the level of the veins. Is it clear? Because when you have secondary venous disorder, the first, the major pathology that you have to think of is the deep venous thrombosis. The second mechanism after venous blood stasis is going to be the second point that we have hypercoagulability. Is it clear? So that is the second mechanism, so hypercoagulability. And the third mechanism under the vehicle triad, after the hypercoagulability, you have the endothelial endothelial damage. Is it clear? So those are the three major mechanisms which are under the vehicle triad. And I was speaking, I was saying that what the deep, the secondary venous disorders. When you speak about secondary venous disorder, the major thing that you have to think about is deep venous thrombosis. Is it clear? The thrombosis in the deep veins. The the thrombosis can either be in deep veins, which is called deep venous thrombosis, or the thrombosis can also be at the level of the superficial veins, where it's going to be called the thrombophebitis. Is it clear? So those are two different terms that you have to put in mind. When you have the thrombosis inside the deep veins, deep circulation like the topopetial veins, the, 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 all those veins that have set in the, the, the venous drainage, is it clear? Those deep veins are set in the venous drainage, is going to be called deep venous thrombosis. But when you have thrombosis at the level of the superficial veins, like the greater saphenous, the lesser saphenous veins, is going to be instead called thrombophebitis. Now, the secondary vein, when they are speaking about secondary venous disorder, we are mostly speaking about it, anything that can result to deep venous thrombosis or thrombophlebitis. I hope you're understanding. And when we are speaking about primary venous disorder, we are speaking about anything that can result to varicose veins because mostly when we say primary venous disorder, it's always associated to varicose veins. Now, in the next story, we're going to visualize now the vehicle triad, which is a major pathog pathogenesis of and where you're going to visualize the risk factors of deep venous thrombosis. Is it correct?